that could be a lot of fun. <laughs> could be. <laughs> Amy, you're gonna go ahead and sure. do that. Thank yes, you. I can go ahead and do that. And I'll let you know when you're live streaming them. Joe, we are now live streaming. Okay. Well, I guess we can start. We'll uh, call the meeting to order. I'll ask the clerk to do a roll call, please. Mayor Nowak? Here. Councillor Nair? Here. Councillor Vandermas? Here. Councillor Wagner? Present. Councillor Smith? Present. Chief Administrative Officer Rick Luigi? Here. Chief Building Official Daryl Denning. Here. Director of Public Works Chris Koch. Here. Director of Recreation Danny Roth. Here. Director of Planning Jeff Vanderbaren. Here. Treasurer Teresa Bish. Here. Fire Chief Paul Redman. Here. And I'm the Municipal Clerk Grace Kosh. Recreation uh, Advisory Chairs. Uh, Wellesley Recreation Committee Chair Jeff Quinn. Here. Oxville Recreation Committee Chair Pearl Fry. Linwood Recreation Committee Chair Lori Seven. Here. Heidelberg Recreation Chair Bev Deckler. And St. Clemens Recreation Chair Melanie Martin. And that is it, sir. Hey, thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Um, are there any uh, declarations of a pecuniary interest in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none, we will move right to the delegations. We have two delegations this evening, or three actually. Roz Bentley, Executive Director, and Greg Smith, Board Chair of the Woolwich Community Health Center to discuss the Wellesley Township Recreation Center and proposed Wellesley Health Clinic. And we also have Chris Martin, Wellesley Township Recreation Center Advisory Committee Chair to discuss the Wellesley Township Recreation Center. So I'll need a motion that the Council of the Township of Wellesley accept Roz Bentley, Craig Smith, and Chris Martin as delegations. Moved by Councillor Vandermas, second by Councillor Nair. Any discussion? All in favor? And that's carried. So we will start with uh, Rosalind Bentley. Thanks, Mayor. There you are. <laughs> I'm between two snowmen. <laughs> um, I'm actually uh, working with Greg Smith, our board chair this evening. And uh, if you don't mind, Greg was going to start with a few remarks. OK. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us tonight. Um, my name is Greg Smith. I'm the board chair of the w Woolwich and Wellesley Township Community Health Center. Um, and I'm here to. Uh, uh, with Roslyn to talk about our passion for the CHC model and how we see it growing in Wellesley Township. Perhaps the best story of uh, the CHC model is an example of my own life here in Wellesley. My partner and I are 10 year residents of Wellesley, just coming up on 10 years. And we moved here as a newly married couple. And in the past uh, five years, I've had three children in Wellesley. And um, as our family has grown, our needs have changed. That is directly related to what we're talking about today. Um, having uh, the Wellesley Township Community Health Center here in Wellesley um, gives us, gives uh, people uh, in the township the opportunity to participate in lots of different community programs and have primary, uh, primary health care right here in Wellesley. And so um, uh, as the ARENA project started, um, our board and Roslyn, the executive director, we saw a really real opportunity for alignment um, with the current space that we occupy in Wellesley, suboptimal in terms of age of the building, accessibility, and very important during these pandemic times, uh, infection control. And so the board, I'm here on behalf of the board to say that we're very excited about the opportunity to reinvigorate our physical presence in Wellesley Township and align it with the growing needs of the township uh, for tomorrow. That'll be my introduction and I'll ask Roslyn to take it from here. Thanks, Greg. 
and thanks Mayor Nowak and councillors for entertaining us this evening. Um, my name is Rosalind Bentley and I'm the Executive Director with the Woolwich Community Health Centre and I'm coming to you this evening not only to support the proposed recreational centre development in Wellesley Township but also to express why we would be interested in co-locating our health clinic um, both the Wellesley and the Linwood facilities in a new facility as part of the recreational complex. So first I'd like to share with you three brief stories about what this opportunity might provide for us. So according to the Mental Health Commission, um, their 2016 youth strategy, two thirds of young adults with mental health challenges report that they experience symptoms as children. So I want to introduce you to Sam. Samuel is 40 and he gets bored in the evenings after school and he hangs out down by the Wellesley Mill Pond with his friends getting into trouble. The neighbours complain and the police have cautioned him. There's never enough to keep his busy brain occupied and he doesn't know why he can't contain his energy. Sometimes it's like there's a voice in his head telling him to do bad things and he can't tell anyone that he thinks he's crazy. In 2021, he's got nowhere to go. With COVID, the indoor craziness just gets worse. So imagine what it would like, be like if there was a Wellesley Township youth hangout. There he could go, he could see the CHC youth worker, Lisa Parker, regularly. She seems cool, she listens to the other kids and she doesn't tell him what to do all the time. So she's not his parent and she's not the doctor, but she seems to know stuff. So one evening when nobody else is around, Sam tells her about his secret worries, that he really is crazy. And Lisa reassures him that everyone has their crazy moments, even if it's really bugging him, maybe he'd like to talk about it some more. So she calmly helps him to explore some of his most worrying thoughts. And then when she feels that he's ready, she asks him if he'd like to speak to a counsellor. Sid, the counsellor, works in the clinic and he's seen him around the building, so maybe he is okay. Doesn't need to leave the building to see Sid and nobody will notice if he slips in. And if it turns out that Sam does need some more help, then the doctors and nurses are there at the clinic. The youth worker can make a referral to one of the linked specialist mental health agencies they come in regularly and they're familiar with the other staff. So everyone is able to wrap around Sam and provide other supports. Even if his parents need to go to a support group, they don't have to drive into the city anymore. There's actually some help in the township. Once Sam understands what might be disturbing him, then maybe he can work through some of the options like learning to meditate, translating his energy into sports and arts activities, learning to cook, trying to make a conversation or learn a new skill. Instead of getting into trouble and slipping between the cracks, he's learning to build the foundations of lifelong healthy habits. And it's not just youth that we're proposing. How about seniors? Ontarians are living longer, they're living healthier lives, and we want to be able to provide facilities that allow for that. The proportion of seniors even in the township over 65 is rising rapidly. This demographic will present great challenges on our local infrastructure if we can't help people to age healthily in the community. And we all know seniors are also the backbone of our volunteer community and they're often the ones to step forward when there are other needs in the community. They help to build a strong legacy. Research indicates that recreation is an important part of someone's social behaviour. If they learn it as a lifelong skill, they'll have it as an adult and a mature citizen too. Physical recreation is particularly important. They can uh, allow for the prevention of many chronic diseases, heart disease, high blood pressure, colon cancer and diabetes. Participation in recreational activities enhances mental health. And again, research shows that elderly people who engage in recreational activities have improved coping behaviors in reaction to stressful life events and daily frustrations. They know that social support is vital and accessible through these activities. So let me introduce you to Mary. Mary fell on the ice last winter and broke her wrist. At 75, she doesn't feel old, but this injury means she can't drive her car. She can't drive to physio appointments and rehab as therefore studded. So she doesn't have money for the endless tax taxi rides, even if a driver will come out to her rural, rural Wellesley home. With COVID, she tries to follow the exercises online, but it's hard to hear and see, and she feels isolated. She gradually deteriorates at home, 
She, no one can see that she's not cooking for herself properly. And she loses so much weight that she falls again and has to be admitted to a facility. With the health center on site, her nurse practitioner could actually see if her follow up straight after her ER visit and take her to the fitness class where she meets other people who have osteoporosis and arthritis. At the class, she meets a neighbor who offers to drive her to the rec center every week and to the health center for her appointments. So she joins the weekly congregate dining program with community care concepts in the senior center and she makes some new friends. She learns some great recipes that help her osteoporosis and arthritis from deteriorating. And she even gets some tips about supplements that she discusses with the pharmacist in town and they stock some new supplements that they haven't had before. She regains her confidence with the exercise and the socialization. She keeps driving. And now she even volunteers with community care concepts and delivers meals to other shut-ins at home. If she does start to decline, her co-volunteers can encourage her to check in with her nurse practitioner, just pop in at her class. She learns energy conservation techniques. She gets cognitive screening and she keeps her mind sharp with fun quizzes and learning new things. She keeps her brain nimble and she's young at heart. Seniors often need that continuity of support from their healthcare providers and the social people in their lives to help spot when things are starting to go wrong. With the health centre on site, we would be so much more interactive. So finally, let me introduce you to Dave. Dave's type 2 diabetic and he lives in Hawkesville and he only rarely gets to the doctor's office. Maybe three times a year is what he's supposed to do, but after his wife died, he feels so lonely and disheartened. He doesn't like cooking for himself. It's always been easier just to order in some dinners, frozen dinners, and just worry at home, but not really do anything. His family doctor has been encouraging for years to move as well as improve his diet, but it's just too much. And he avoids meeting with the dietitian. He's no clue in the kitchen. That's a woman's job. He also promised the clinic nurse and the respiratory therapist that he will quit smoking one of these days. But maybe that's another year, another New Year's resolution he might get to keep. With the wellness center being open, he gets to see some other guys just like him and they're going to the diabetes education class. He knew it was around, but he just didn't believe anybody his age actually went. Maybe it is okay to go. With the other guys in the class, they swap ideas about better meals. They make a date to go watch the kids play hockey together. And it turns out there's a time for old guys like him to get out on the ice. So with his new buddies, he actually has fun and he wants to breathe a little easier while he's skating. So he starts to reduce and then quit smoking. They challenge each other to get more in shape. Dave cheats and he actually goes and meets with the dietitian and she gives him a tailored meal plan. They take some cooking classes with the grandkids and then he challenges his diabetes buddies to make the best barbecue sugar-free sauce ever. And guess what? They win a prize at the ABC festival. The diabetes educator encourages him to get his eyes tested. And when they realize he's also developed a nasty sore on his foot, he meets with the chiropodist. She helps him to choose some better shoes for walking and also looks at his skates. She even comes out to watch him skate on a break so she can check that the new ideas are working. Dave feels proud of himself. He's more aware of what he needs to do to stay healthy and can be an example to others. He finds out the men's shed movement, um, which is an international mental health support group. And he and his hockey buddies establish a Wellesley Township chapter. They even work on work with some of the youth from the hangout and they build some carts for the next ABC festival. With all these stories, what they have in common is that health and well-being are more than just access to medical care. With the health centre in the new facility, there's a better layout for good infection control. There's more staff to cover, so no care gets cancelled or delayed. And if someone's away, then there are other people to help. The team has more opportunity to discuss complex cases together. They can brainstorm more comprehensive approaches and they can work more closely with both the health centre's own community staff, but also other partners. By creating a hub, there's so many linkages to creative opportunities and collaborative partners. Agencies that would love to run programs in the township can get more attendees to, attend, to come. So we think this is an amazing opportunity. We're really excited 
and we hope that if you have any questions or other follow-up please let us know thank you Roz, and thank you uh gregory um great presentation and it is exciting it's 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 uh, i was so thrilled when i uh when i heard about uh the potential at least for something like this to uh, to happen so uh any questions do uh, any members of council have a question for either uh greg smith or roslyn carl you're on mute no you're not as our conversation this afternoon roslyn uh, i just want to reiterate my feelings that I'm disappointed that Linwood's uh, health center will be closed as a result of this. Uh, I think that Northwest corner, like I said, is, I think they came and rely on that Linwood uh, facility. And now that uh, the horse and buggy or even anybody from Linwood has to travel to uh, Wellesley village, I think yeah, we, we talked about this and how you're going to be making house visits. I think it's just, like you said, it's been there for 20 years and now all of a sudden we're taking it away. So uh, as you heard, Cole and I had a chance to chat about this. Um, we would only obviously uh, create this if the new opportunity was going forward. Um, but what we wouldn't be doing is doing any less work in the townships. What we really plan to do is to create a, a combination of um, mobile or pop-up services. So in fact, what we might hope to be able to do is to reach into further of the smaller communities than just Linwood, which is where we have our three day a week clinic uh, right now. So one of the challenges we have, um, as with many agencies, is you know we do need a certain level of um, physical space to work effectively if we're in a permanent location. But we can also work, and COVID's taught us a lot about being creative and how to um, move those services that can be made either mobile or virtual into the community so that they can reach people. So the intention is very much to build um, and to be uh, reaching out as well as to um, focus on only the things that have to be in a physical location being there. So we think that this would allow us to have some of those opportunities um, that would you know, create more connection for people uh, and where possible, you know, reach them at home when that's more appropriate, you know, if they're bed bound or if they have uh, inability to get to the clinic locations. I know that COVID's not going to, I hope it doesn't last forever. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I know this distancing, I think we'll have a, a little of that forever. But I'd like, I, I'm just disappointed that we're going to have to move from there. I'll even have a satellite uh, spot at the Linwood Recreation Center. Yes, I think um, if, you know, one of the things that we could do, just like the blood clinic runs regularly at the Linwood uh, Community Centre, um, what we'd like to see is the opportunity to run regular clinics. Um, and it could be a vaccine clinic like COVID or just school level vaccines, um, the regular follow up that we need to do in the community. So, you know, we certainly are exploring. We actually had a meeting this morning, interesting enough, with a, a group of old order bishops and deacons to talk about uh, the needs of the Mennonite community specifically. But, you know, they echo many of the needs of the rural community generally, which is you know, there's routine things that would be helpful to be offered locally, but people also appreciate having um, that urgent, uh, uh, you know, care requirements locally, so they don't have to go into Grand River Hospital or St. Mary's, there might be something that could be done locally. And we certainly tend to a lot of, you know, minor cuts and scrapes and bruises, as well as coughs and colds and routine ongoing care for more serious things like diabetes and chronic heart failure. And these are all things that um, with a, 
the focused uh, center we're able to offer some of the services that otherwise you'd be going to hospital outpatients for or the eMERGE department. And some of that does require, you know, specialist equipment or um, access to high-speed computers, which we can do in Wellesley. Um, and some of it doesn't, some of it can be done in the community center and just requires us to see people regularly. It's forming those relationships we know is so key to, to being able to provide the right kind of support. Okay, Carl. Any other questions, Herb? Yeah. To follow up on Carl, um, you know, I have a little bit of a concern with the distance factor also. This is a long distance. A lot of the, there, there are a lot of people that don't really drive in the Linwood area. They are so settled there. Could you not sort of do maybe a sub office? If you said it, I, I may have missed it. Will you go there maybe twice a week even? And, and, and you make yourself available to the local people, people that, not might, that may not be driving or whatever. I can't see these people going all the way to St. Clements. They might as well go to, to Elmira practically, you know, and I mean, to, to I, I think that you should open some kind of sub office service in Linwood at least. So we, where people can come with their complaints and then you can always bring them into Wellesley for, for the main treatment and uh, whatever else you feel, what others, uh, other uh, treatments may be required or services. But I think Linwood being as far distant as it is, and, and we have a lot of, uh, you know, people there that don't, they're not into the, the cars, they're not gonna come all the way to Wells. I, I just don't see that. And at least if you make it available and create some sub office where you, you're there three times a week, a half a day, even, or whatever, or two hours, at least people have a place to go to. They can walk to it. They can go there. And then you can take it from there as to what services they require and, and bring them into Wellesley. But I do agree the distance factor. I agree with Carl that just shut it down completely. I'm not sure whether that's a solution. That because the whole purpose with these clinics was to 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 provide some services locally, locally, and Linwood is a little bit too far from local as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Hey, any other questions or comments for Roz or Greg? Okay, seeing none. Um, thank you once again for coming out. I think uh, you know we've identified a number of issues that uh, that I'm sure we'll in time we'll be able to have a closer look at. I think we're a ways away yet from uh, anything uh, definitive happening, but uh, it certainly has a tremendous amount of potential, and it's uh, I think it's very exciting. So um, thank you, and uh, maybe we could move on now to Chris Martin. Chris. Thank you, Mayor Joe, and um, greetings to uh, the rest of the council and staff. And I appreciate you uh, taking the time to hear our delegation uh, tonight on this particularly important topic. Uh, in November, our advisory committee submitted a report to staff with information on the user groups and the community partners of the proposed Wellesley Township Rec Center. Uh, the report provided detailed information on what the mandates of the organizations are specifically who they are, who they serve, the outcomes of their activities and their specific needs to accomplish their mandate. This information was provided from two perspectives. What will the new rec center do for their organizations and what would happen to their organizations if the status quo continued? It is very unfortunate that the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program was not successful. That funding was the most cost-effective way to meet the needs of our township and to fast track the project. However, just because the funding is not there does not mean that the needs have changed. What is now before us is what priorities we place on these needs and how best to financially meet them. And this is the question that lays before you tonight. Our user groups are wide and varied and have many different mandates. We felt it best to break them into four groups, arena groups, outdoor groups, community organizations, and social organizations. 
I don't want to list the requirements of each organization here as it's contained in our report, but I would like to address the commonality threaded through it all. Perhaps I should take a moment to list the organizations we represent. The Wellesley Applejacks, Twin Center Stars, Twin Center Hurricanes, Adult Rec Hockey Leagues, Wellesley Skating Club, Wellesley Curling, Wellesley Soccer, Skateboard Group, Wellesley Township Fall Fair, ABC Festival, Lions Club, Theatre Wellesley, and the Wellesley Youth and Wellesley Seniors. I've often said the work of these organizations is what makes our community livable and why we choose to live here. Minor sports give our youth an opportunity to gather, learn to work as a team, take pride in representing our township, develop a skill, and the obvious benefits of physical activity. The Fall Fair and ABC proudly showcase our township and draw people from far and wide, all the while giving their members a social outing in the year-long planning and preparation process. And they also give back financially to our community and that cannot be understated. The same can be said for the Lions and Theatre Wellesley and the youth and seniors, their mandate is the betterment of the well-being of a vulnerable population in our township. And the common theme amongst all these groups is the social aspect of their activities. Something that COVID has shown us is what happens when you lose social places and social activities. We all feel the effects of this every day and long for the time when life can go back to normal. We know today firsthand what it's like not to have the things our organizations do. Many of our user groups indicated that without a new rec center or arena, the long-term prospects of their organizations would be at risk. Some would cease operations, and for those who could continue, they would do so in limited ways. Either way, the effect on our community will not be positive with the social benefits lost. Being a rec center, it's not surprising many of the user groups referenced the physical the, uh, the benefits of physical fitness. And in every case, when they did, they also referenced the mental health benefits of their activities for youth and adults alike. Physical activity with social interaction has obvious mental health benefits. And it's critical we give our organizations every opportunity to thrive and thereby maximize the quality of life in our township. This project is often referred to as the arena project, but it is so much more. It seems clear whatever council decides, the arena amenity will be taken care of. Yet it is only to be only used by a small portion of the township for eight months of the year and by those who predominantly have means. It is also the most expensive amenity to build and to operate. One of the options before you today will be to refurbish the existing arena. Well, this will be many others behind. And we feel the greatest impact of this rec center and what will touch the most people in our community is the portion that exists beyond the arena. In particular, the youth and senior centers. The need for a space for them to gather is of great importance. Both groups have highlighted the improved quality of life and outcomes that come from a physical place to gather and the proximity to resource organizations that can catch those who are falling behind before they fall behind. This space doesn't currently exist in our township, so it's challenging to know what we're missing, but we only need to look to neighboring communities like Wilmot and Woolwich, where their youth and senior centers thrive and the organizations that support them, such as community care concepts, can fulfill, fully fulfill their mandate. And I think Rosalind spoke very well to that in her uh, three examples. I'd like to note from the beginning of this process over near half ago, year and a half ago, our committee has worked to make this project as inclusive as possible to the township as a whole. In our mission statement drafted at our first meeting, we articulated this was a township project and not just a Wellesley Village project. This is challenging in our township as there are many silos. But it, <coughs> excuse me, but it has been our goal to break down these silos as much as possible. So we're very pleased that the Community Health Centre has expressed an interest to co-locate a new health centre at the Rec Complex. I think Rosalind spoke well uh, to the kind of partnership that this will make uh, with the Recreation Centre and make the Recreation Centre a township-wide asset. The synergies possible are very exciting, such as the partnership with seniors and youth, and the active healthy living activities will benefit many. The goal being to make the Rec Centre a beehive of activity every day of the year and all the while improving the quality of life of the citizens of Wellesley Township. In closing, I'd like to reiterate that this project is so much more than just an arena. 
this rec center project will enable so many user groups to fulfill their mandate and maximize their impact on our community. We have an opportunity today to make a lasting impact on the social fabric of our township. We ask the council look beyond the necessary ice surface to the other amenities that will touch the lives of so many uh, more people. I'd also like to, like Rosalind did, sort of make it make it real or provide a story um, that makes it real. And uh, for those of you who've uh, worked with me on this project over the last year and a half, you've heard my uh, Any Given Tuesday story. Uh, some of you might roll your eyes because you've heard it so often, but it's an analogy or a story, I think, that gives credence uh, or life to what the arena would look like or the, the rec center would look like. So on any given Tuesday, we'll just pick Tuesday in November. I don't know, doesn't matter. Um, the rec center opens up in the morning, maybe seven or eight o'clock. Um, some people head out on the walking track, uh, maybe some new moms, some seniors. Uh, one thing we saw when we toured facilities last year or the year before, I guess, um, the walking track was in continuous use, use uh, whether the winter, the summer, at any time during the day, there was always people on the walking track. By 9 a.m., um, the seniors maybe start to stroll into their active living center. Um, some gentlemen play cards, some ladies work on a quilt perhaps. And uh, that also happens to be the day that uh, there's a seniors hot lunch on. So at 11 o'clock, some chairs are getting set up uh, in the uh, gym hall and um, the kitchen is busy. Uh, and so the hot lunch takes place. And uh, by two o'clock that's wrapped up and most of the seniors are maybe heading home. And by three, um, kids start to stroll in. Lisa Parker heads over to the youth center. It's opened up. By the way, there's still people on the walking track, walking around. Um, it opens up, uh, maybe some kids go play floor hockey, basketball, some others flop on the couch or play foosball. Um, just, uh, just hanging out. Uh, Lisa might notice someone that, uh, not, not too cheery perhaps because uh, they didn't do well on a test and they're really uh, upset. Mom and dad are gonna find out about that. So she pulls them aside and uh, talks to them that, you know, this isn't the end of the world. Um, and so they go home okay and happy rather than flip and slide and, and fall into uh, an anxious state. Just to back up the seniors as well, someone maybe didn't come to the hot lunch who was supposed to. Um, they didn't show up. So one of their friends calls and, and yeah, they're not feeling well. And that's been the second day they've not felt, felt well. So they decide to call uh, their son or daughter and say, I think your dad's not uh, doing so well. So they make a call and, and they catch them before they, they uh, get into some serious trouble or serious illness. Anyway, at, um, so the kids are showing up. Some kids go over and play on the skateboard park. By five o'clock, that starts to wrap up. Um, and then um, uh, maybe some, um, uh, perhaps some uh, exercise camps, some boot camps, uh, Zumba classes take place at five or six o'clock. And by seven o'clock, uh, that's finished and um, there's meetings taking place. Uh, maybe the ABC is doing a wrap up, it's in November. So they're maybe kicking off the next year's uh, meeting. So that's taking place in the meeting rooms. And, um, and maybe in the gymnasium, it's now converted over to an adult rec volleyball league or pickleball or something like that. And again, all the while the walking track is taking place. So that's how I met and envisioned the, uh, the arena on any given Tuesday. And, and I think what's important there is that I didn't mention the hockey rink. I didn't talk about the obvious, it's November, uh, probably starting at four or five o'clock, hockey started. But all these other things have been taking place and they touch so many different people in our township. And I think that's the key part uh, that making it as inclusive as possible and, and I, I'm very excited with the health center uh, joining on board. There are so many other possibilities, programming that could take place during the day um, with their programs that they're not able to do right now. And uh, I think what's important, while our committee isn't the one who decides what money is spent, I think we can all agree that whatever money is spent, it needs to be well spent. There's no point in building a facility that nobody uses. And I think what I've just described here is something that would be used regularly and often by all members of our township and, and um, from all ages and, and different uh, walks of life. So I think that's uh, what's important. So that concludes my remarks. I appreciate you giving me a chance to speak to you. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, council, any uh, members of council have any questions for Chris?
Okay, uh, seeing none, Chris, it was uh, very well spoken and, and much appreciated. Uh, and uh, your year and a half work on this uh, on this uh, file has been uh, certainly uh, certainly appreciated, and uh, I just want to thank you very much, and and all the the folks that have been working with you. I know there's uh, you have a couple of committees that have been formed, and uh, you know you've 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 uh, put a lot of elbow grease into this. So uh, thank you uh, thank you so much for all your hard work on this. You're welcome. It is a team effort. It is. Thank you. So I'm I'm going to um, I, there are probably uh, 28 or 30 people on this Zoom meeting that are here, and I think the majority of them would probably be here to see what uh, what direction council wants to do with regard to the uh, staff report. So as opposed to going into the um, uh, public meeting on. Uh, on development charges, I would, if uh, council's in agreement, I'd like to bring the staff report forward at this point. Um, do I have any, anybody have any issues with that? Okay. So the um, staff report, um, rec uh, one uh, slash 21, um, oh, wait a sec. I got two mice going here, so you bear with me, please. Yeah. Yeah, I was right up in front there for a minute. Now it's gone. Oh, there it is. Okay. So it's report uh, actually two of 2021. And the recommendation, recommendation by uh, staff is that the Council of the Township of Wellesley review all options set forth in this report. And further, that the Council authorize staff to continue moving forward with the RFP process from the list of pre qualified contractors for a proposed project with a $15,000 budget as described in option one of this report. And further that council instruct staff to bring a report to council with the proposed budget for the complete RFP process. I'm wondering if I could get a mover for that to bring it onto the floor. Councillor Vandermas seconded by Councillor Nair. So uh, that's open for discussion, council. Okay. As often happens when uh, the report, oh, Councillor, uh, our CAO, Rick, would you, did you have a comment? I just wanted to point out to the rest of the listeners on the call here that uh, you, you did make a slight slip in your speech there. It was $15 million project, not 15,000. Oh, well, maybe that was wishful thinking, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. Uh, Carl, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with this, but just as long as it doesn't cost us any more than the $5,000 for uh, engineering fees, I think we have to revisit this uh, after we've done that. Okay. Um, any other comments? Okay, then I'm gonna call the question. All in favor? That's carried and that's carried unanimously. So we will be moving forward with the RFP process. Um, I don't know if, uh, uh, Danny, do we have a timeline yet on that? Maybe it was in the report. I've read it a few times, but I might've missed it. There is no timeline in that uh, Mayor Nowak, but uh, we're hopeful that it's it's in and around a three month process. Okay. Okay. Thank you everyone. Thank you uh, for uh, joining in. And I apologize for my using more than one mouse here. 
we will then go to the public meeting, I believe would be. So I'll need a motion that the public meeting regarding development charges, um, wait a second. Council adjourn uh, to hold a public meeting with respect to development charges. I need that motion moved by Councillor Nair, seconded by, 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 by Councillor Smith. All in favor? Carried. Okay. This will be the process that we follow for the remote planning public meeting for this evening. I will call on Sean Michael Stephen to bring forward his presentation. Council will have the opportunity to ask Mr. Stephen questions. I will then open up the meeting to the public for questions or comments. Please raise your hand so that it can be seen on your camera. If you don't, do not have a, a camera, please use the chat function within Zoom to indicate that you wish to speak. You'll be asked to provide your name, address for the record. We will now proceed. Mr. Stephen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, you could just let me know when the uh, presentation is sharing on your end. Uh, I'll, I'll begin. Yes, it is. It's there. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's just by way of introduction, uh, this public meeting is being held to provide an overview of and receive feedback on the proposed development charge bylaw amendment that's being brought forward. Uh, the meeting is held as a mandatory requirement of the Development Charges Act, uh, in which a public meeting must be held before the passing of any development charge bylaw. And the study has been or will have been available 60 days prior to uh, the proposed date for passage of the bylaw and the appropriate notice of the public meeting has been given in accordance with the act. And so an update to the township's 2019 uh, development charge background study has been prepared uh, as the basis for the uh, amending development charge bylaw uh, to amend the township's current uh, DC bylaw 55 2019. And the amendments that are being proposed are being driven primarily by the changes in the Development Charges Act legislation that have been brought about through the uh, More Homes, More Choice Act and COVID-19 Economic Recovery Act that have received royal assent uh, in 2019 and 2020, respectively. And so the changes uh, that have been proposed pertain to uh, changes to the development charge recoverable costs as a result of the uh, removal of the 10% statutory deduction that was required for soft services, and as well to reflect changes in the timing of calculation, as well as the determination of the charge uh, for um, certain types of development as are now uh, statutory requirements through uh, amendments to the Development Charges Act. But other than those uh, specific changes or amendments to the bylaw that will be uh, presented this evening, all of the components of the 2019 uh, background study, as well as the current bylaw, will remain unchanged. In terms uh, of a little bit more detail on the development charge recoverable cost changes. Uh, so that the removal of the statutory 10% deduction uh, that had been uh, required previously uh, for services in the township's case, uh, including parks and recreation and uh, growth related studies uh, is no longer a requirement of the act. And so the removal of that deduction thereby increases uh, municipalities abilities to recover the growth related costs of new development from those uh, benefiting parties. And as well as the background study uh, is going through the uh, process of being amended, uh, it has been updated to reflect the, chain, the proposed changes in uh, scope and cost for the Wellesley Recreation Center, um, consistent with those that have been identified this evening. So in aggregate, the, those changes result in an increase in the development charge recoverable cost over the 10-year period for parks and recreation services of just over $150,000 and for the growth-related studies service of $12,500.
And so the amended schedule of charges presented here, firstly in the 2019 values being the cost base in the 2019 study, as well as the uh, current bylaw. Uh, but those charges would then be indexed to 2021 values consistent with the policies within the development charge bylaw uh, to reflect uh, the, the current charges. And so no other changes uh, have been made to the structure of the charge. It's imposed uh, on a residential dwelling unit basis for the same four types of dwelling units as in the current bylaw, as well as per square meter of non-residential gross floor area. And so the, the charge that would come into uh, place upon the bylaw uh, becoming effective would be $10,058 $10, for a single and semi-detached dwelling. A decrease into as low as $3,982 for a one bedroom or bachelor apartment and $32.22 per square meter of non residential gross floor area. So, in comparison to the uh, current uh, charges on a residential and non residential basis, the charges for a single detached dwelling unit would represent a 7% increase overall or an increase in the charge of $657 in comparison to the current charge. And um, we can see that increase being primarily for parks and recreation services and uh, a lesser amount for growth related studies. In terms of the non-residential charge, it would actually be a slight decrease uh, in the charge of 2.4%. And uh, although the uh, overall development charge costs are increasing, the reason the non-residential charge is decreasing slightly uh, is due to a change in how the growth-related studies costs have been allocated to a residential or non-residential benefit uh, in alignment with some of the amendments to the Development Charges Act that have been made. To, to put those uh, changes into their uh, proper context in terms of the total development charge that is payable within the township, including not only uh, the Township of Wellesley's development charge, but as well as the region of Waterloo charges and the education uh, development charges, we see that the uh, 7% increase in the charge or a $657 increase uh, represents only a 1.7% overall increase in the development charge payable, uh, just marginally increasing the relative position of the township above that of Guelph, but still below that of all the other Waterloo townships. Uh, looking then at non-residential development, firstly for uh, the commercial sector, uh, we see uh, that 2.4% decrease in the township's charge uh, being a, actually a 0.4% decrease overall, not materially changing uh, the position of the township relative to the neighboring municipalities. And similarly for uh, industrial uh, development where the uh, overall a decrease in the charge is about 0.7%. Again, not changing the township's overall relative position uh, to the other uh, neighboring municipalities. So then to look at the, the changes uh, to the development charge by, uh, bylaw policies that are proposed through this amendment, uh, as I mentioned, only those uh, summarized here uh, or only the changes summarized here will be reflected in the amendment and all other policies uh, within the current bylaw will remain the same. Uh, there, are, there have been changes uh, made uh, through in the Development Charges Act uh, to the collection, uh, the timing of collection of development charges as well as uh, when the charge will be determined. And uh, those uh, changes are currently in effect and have been in effect since January 1st of 2020, uh, but they are being reflected in this amendment so that they will be present in the Township's Development Charge Bylaw for uh, transparency. And so uh, what has uh, been amended in the Act is that now uh, rental housing and institutional developments will be required to pay the development charge in six equal annual payments commencing on the date of occupancy. Uh, this is in contrast to the, uh, the standard bylaw provisions in which development charges are payable at building permit issuance. And then for nonprofit housing as defined in the regulation, development charges will be payable in 21 equal annual payments uh, commencing the date of occupancy. 
whereas currently uh, the charges are calculated at the time of building permit issuance uh, for any developments that proceed through site plan or zoning bylaw amendment applications, those charges will now be determined when that application is made and they'll be frozen at that rate until uh, building permit issuance as long as the building permit is issued within two years of the approval of the planning application. The act also allows, uh, but does not require municipalities to uh, impose interest on the uh, previous noted policies. Uh, and so the, it is the township's uh, policy that has been brought forward uh, to council previously, that interest will be charged at the Bank of Canada prime lending rate plus 2%. Uh, for, and that rate will be charged for the installment payments uh, for the institutional and rental housing developments but not for the nonprofit housing uh, developments. Uh, and further that uh, interest will also be charged uh, on the uh, charges that are determined at the time of planning application. Uh, and um, this, this interest rate policy uh, that is being brought or has been brought forward and will be reflected in the bylaw is consistent with the proposed policy that would be imposed across the region of Waterloo. And then lastly, uh, there have been changes to the statutory exemptions to the payment of development charges in the Act. Uh, previously, there was an exemption uh, for the intensification of residential housing where uh, an existing residential uh, building could add up to two additional apartment units within the existing building without the payment of development charges. That exemption has now been extended to uh, additional units that are in ancillary structures to the existing uh, residential building as well. And then further for uh, the creation of new residential housing, uh, that purpose-built uh, new residential housing can create a, or can include a second dwelling unit within or ancillary to the new residential building uh, and that second dwelling unit would be exempt uh, from development charges uh, pursuant to the regulations. So the next steps in, in the process then is for council to receive any input from uh, the general public uh, and consider any potential amendments to the uh, update study and draft amending bylaw before the uh, amending bylaw comes back to council for adoption on February 2nd, 2021. So that does conclude uh, the presentation, if there are any questions. Okay, um, thank you, Sean. I'm, uh, I have to back up. Um, I failed to ask the clerk the method of advertising. Grace, did you, uh, we should go through that, please. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Notification for this public meeting was advertised in the Woolwich Observer and on our township website. Okay. So I'll also state any person who wants further notice of the passage of a bylaw should email their full name, address, and postal code to the clerk immediately following the meeting. Uh, are there any questions from council now to Sean? Seeing none, I'll open the meeting up for questions or comments um, from the public. Please raise your hand if you would like to speak to the subject. Please provide your name, address uh, for the record, please. We had no one registered to speak. And once again, seeing none. So I'll now make a motion that the public meeting regarding development charges is now adjourned and council meeting resume. Moved by. Councillor Smith, a second by Councillor Wagner. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. We'll uh, we'll see you February the second. Okay. Thank you very much. Happy evening. Okay. Move right into recreation. Herb. Okay. Thank you. Minutes from the previous meeting. Rep 121 minutes of the previous meeting. Can I have a mover? 
Shelley, seconder, Peter, any discussions? All in favor? Carried. And service board reports, uh, Lori, we'll start with you. I see pearls here too, okay. Um, I just wanted, you, okay, I just wanted to first of all, thank uh, council for the uh, approval of the repairs to the Limwood street lights. Um, I think that was a, a nice touch. Our, our Christmas street lights are still up and I think it gives a little bit of uh, happiness to people as they walk around town because pretty much that's all you can do now. So I think it, uh, it helps bring the uh, spirit up in town still. So thank you for doing that for us. And I also wanted to thank uh, council and staff. I'm not sure which one to thank more, but the Linwood Rec Center um, for the painting and also the, uh, the addition of the acoustics. Of course, we haven't been able to test them and find out how well they actually work, but hopefully at some time in the near future, we'll be able to do that. So thank you for uh, going ahead with that. And we look forward to testing them out sometime. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Yep. Any questions for Lori? Okay, we'll move right on here. Jeff. Good evening, council and mayor, uh, staff. Um, I don't think there's much of an update in the Wellesley area at this point in time. We were going to go ahead with the, um, I guess, the outdoor rink in uh, the pavilion, picnic pavilion, but due to lockdown restrictions and uh, the potential of having it shut down, it, it just doesn't seem like a, a very, uh, I guess, responsible or viable activity to undertake at this point in time. I hate to, to uh, strap volunteers and, and touch on them and have them all out there and, and put ice in and then, you know, uh, complaints or, or issues of people not following the rules um, cause it to close down and, and it would waste township resources and volunteer resources and uh, both of which are, are uh, they're not plentiful and they need to be, uh, uh, you know, mindful of that. Uh, you know, uh, the Wellesley's board's next biggest fundraising event is the home show, which is something that uh, usually takes place in the latter part of, uh, of April. We're, uh, you know, moving into the to the, the mid to later part of January, and we, we see lockdown being, is going to be in place till at least February 10th. Um, uh, I, I don't foresee that uh, magically things are going to uh, to go back to any way, any sense of normalcy by the April timeframe. So um, I suspect that we won't be able to hold uh, any form of a home show that's going to be of value to the community or the, uh, the, uh, the vendors this year um, and suspect that it'll be a, be something that we'll have to postpone and cancel off out until 2022. Um, beyond that, it's, I, I think it's a bit of a struggle we have right now to promote rec activities other than uh, walking and uh, at a safe distance at this point in time. And I don't think it's advisable for us to try too much else that's uh, coordinated to be quite honest, because uh, it's not uh, advisable at this point in time. So I think we'll, we'll be in a stalemate position for a while and uh, coming out of it, uh, hopefully we can come up with some sort of ideas of what we can do with, uh, to get people active. I don't think it's going to be hard to get people outdoors once we're allowed to, uh, to get them into groups. I think if uh, I put a tin can in the middle of a field and say, go, there'll be 200 people out there chasing it and trying to kick it in and out. So hopefully we can uh, get, some, get some, some more activities going in the future. Okay, any questions for Jeff? Barring none, okay, Pearl. Uh, so I don't have a much, much to say either. Um, Hawksville has by, basically not really done anything since uh, the lockdown. We um, have had contact from our fireworks um, company and they have advised us if we want to do fireworks for Canada Day that we should probably be ordering them well in advance because their suppliers is, are sounding like they will only have about half the amount of um, product available from what they usually do. So um, I guess I'm not quite sure what to do about that at this point. We're just kind of holding off for now, but we would like to do it if we possibly can. Um, other than that, we haven't really discussed anything um, further 
with what to do in Hawksville. We did have some people asking about the rink as well, but uh, we decided that it's not worth even trying to manage that. So we didn't bother to put any ice up. Um, other than that, I'd say that's it. <laughs> okay, thanks, Pearl. Anybody have any questions for Pearl? Now, I did receive a, a, an email from Bev, and I'm not too sure whether we have to do a motion on it, but I'll read it off here. I read over the minutes uh, from the last meeting, and there is an error in the Heidelberg report. The association paid for the prizes for the house decorating contest. The minutes state they were donated by local businesses. We purchased gift certificates from our local businesses to help out during the COVID and for all the support they have given us in the past. It would please, if you would please make the corrections, Bev. So uh, uh, should, do, do we have to do a motion on that, Grace, or just change the minutes? If it's okay with uh, the mover and the seconder, we can no. just on, do a friendly amendment and instead of the minutes being approved as presented, yes. the minutes would be approved as amended. As amended, okay. Yes. So so let's make that friendly amendment and uh, and uh, approve the minutes with the amendment, right? Do I have a mover? Peter, second. Don't, don't. Carl. Any discussions? Yo, did were you just scratch? Or were you putting your hand up? I didn't catch you. Okay. <laughs> I, I just saw I just saw the hand move down. All in favor? Gary. Okay, now we're into uh, the director update. Danny, do you have anything that you want to discuss? Yeah, I've just got a short update to, to report. Uh, the hurricane, Twin Center Hurricanes and Twin Center Stars had a two week planned shutdown from December 21st to January 4th. Uh, during this planned shutdown, there came the provincial announcement uh, that came in effect December 6th and the further lockdown measures announced on January 14th. With the current lockdown measures in place until February 11th, staff are working with the user group to determine the best course of action going forward. There was a request for an outdoor rink uh, in, in Linwood, uh, but it was determined after the January 14th announcement, it was decided not to move forward with it. Uh, new signage is being placed at the dog park in Wellesley with the five person maximum listed. The blood donor clinics are continuing in Linwood uh, each month uh, and they've got, they're booked in February. The Wellesley blood donor clinic has not been booked by the organizers for the month of February. So we're, staff are looking into that to see if they're going to continue with the Wellesley blood donor clinic or if they're going on hiatus for the time being. There will be COVID-19 testing centers in Linwood each Thursday in February from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Appointments must be booked through the Woolwich Community Health Center. And GRCA has uh, posted one sign at the Wellesley Pond stating stay off the ice and there will be posting more signs next week. And that's all I have to report and I'll take any questions. Any questions for Danny? Okay, thank you, Danny. And uh, we'll move on to accounts, financial statement. There are none available at this point. And that concludes my portion of the meeting. Thanks, Herb. Uh, planning and development, Peter. Thank you. Planning and development file 2 slash 2021. Recommendation that the Council of the Township of Wellesley receive this report for information. Can I have someone make that recommendation, please? Herb, seconded by Carl. Are there any comments or discussion? I was uh, all in favor, I'm sorry. Good, now discussion. Okay. If not, we're ready to go. Okay. Um... That's it, Peter, I think. Yep, just the one. Road and bridge, Shelley. Uh, RMB 
2021 recommendation that the Council of the Township of Wellesley support the recommendation by staff to maintain the multi-use trail along Greenwood Hill Road and Gerber Road for the purposes of snow and ice removal during the winter months. Do I have a mover? Moved by Peter, seconded by Carl. Discussion? Peter? Yeah, I appreciated the work that uh, Chris did to, uh, to look at that again. And uh, particularly in these times, it's, uh, it's a very well used facility. And uh, I'm glad to see then that's gonna be made a little more accessible. It should make a lot of people happy. Anyone else? Okay, I'll call the vote. All in favor of the motion? Carried. And that is it for Road and Bridge. Okay, we'll move to admin and finance. Report um, AF and P3 2021. And the recommendation is that the Council of the Township of Wellesley approve the additional purchase of the Fort. 40 mail virtual servers at a, uh, at a cost of $3,894.53, including HST, and further, that the 40 mail virtual server to be funded from the Municipal Modernization Fund Reserve. And that moved by Councillor Wagner, second by Councillor Nair. Any discussion on that? Carl? Well, I'm just curious as to what the vendor clerical errors were that we get 50% off. What, what happened there? At, if I may speak, at the time it, um, the quote was provided to Leonard, it included the, um, at budget time, everything was included. When it came time to um, per get everything in order, uh, the vendor said that we needed this extra device, this extra server. So uh, they have given it to us at half price uh, because of the error. But we thought we were purchasing um, through the bud at budget time with the whole unit, like everything combined, the bundle, and it wasn't. Nothing wrong with that. Leonard was very forceful. So all in favor? And that's carried. Um, we will move to the information items. Are there any items on that list that uh, council would like to have brought forward? Peter? Um, that's... Um... Insurance one, it comes up every once in a while. I think every time it does, we should support it. And this is the one of four slash 21, municipality of Charlton and DAC regarding the uh, civil and liability. So I think every time that comes up, I think we, we should support it. I think it's yep, I agree with you. Worthwhile to get that changed eventually. Um, Carl, you had your speaker on off for a minute. Yeah, I was just, uh, I was more interested in the other one, uh, these uh, uh, veterans clubs. We don't have anything in the township, do we? So, no. them. Okay. Um, uh, Councillor Vandermas suggested we support the, I think that's the one, um, page 37, 421 is the number on that. I was uh, glad you brought that forward, Peter. I was planning on doing the same thing. Um, council has direction or staff have uh, direction to move forward with that. Okay. I don't think we need a motion for that. No. Okay. Uh, okay. So I need a motion that the information items be uh, received as presented. Moved by Councillor Nair, seconded by Councillor Wagner. All in favor? Carried. Unfinished business. Other business. No closed session. Next meeting, February, uh, next meeting of the Committee of the Whole is February 16th. I need a motion to adjourn, Councillor Wagner. Second and by, don't need a seconder. All in favor.
Jerry.